name is Lada Angolastane, and I'm Associate Professor of Medicine at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I'm a co-author of this publication. Hello, my name is Joel Newgarten, and I'm Professor of Medicine at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. We recently published an article entitled, The Influence of Sex on the Progression of Chronic Kidney Disease in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Nearly two decades have passed since we first suggested that gender influences the rate of progression of chronic kidney disease and that female gender was renal protective. Despite the publication of numerous studies and commentaries on the subject, controversy surrounding this important issue remains. Although experimental models clearly show a protective effect of estrogen on renal disease progression, the data in humans is less clear. In Table 1, we summarize published clinical studies that assess the rate of progression of chronic kidney disease in men versus women. We believe that the data suggests that chronic kidney disease progresses more rapidly in men. We highlight studies by Tangri and by Ricardo in supporting this conclusion. However, we also acknowledge heterogeneity in methodology and outcome measures in the data and also acknowledge alternative interpretations of existing data. Chronic kidney disease has been shown to be more common in women than in men. Yet this generally accepted observation has been challenged by various commentators who question the use of a single EGFR cutoff to, divine, to define CKD in men and women. In contrast to the direction of gender dimorphism in CKD, Incident dialysis is more common in men than in women. How can we explain this apparent paradox? That men are more likely to suffer from incident dialysis, but are less likely to suffer from chronic kidney disease. Two possible explanations come to mind. One, chronic kidney disease progresses more rapidly in men than in women, or two, Men start dialysis early than, earlier than women, leaving more women to die in stage five CKD, having never reached dialysis. It must also be recognized that these explanations are not necessarily mutually exclusive. In our article, we review the literature concerning this apparent paradox and conclude that there are insufficient data available at the present time to support the conclusion that death of women in stage five CKD accounts for the reversal of sexual dimorphism as CKD progresses from earlier stages to end stage renal disease. Although men start dialysis at a higher EGFR than women, we point out that the difference in bias between the sexes in the estimating equations used to estimate GFR are similar to the difference in EGFR between men and women at the start of dialysis. Moreover, there is little evidence to support the notion that there exists a large pool of women relative to men in stage five CKD that are not being dialyzed. If renal disease does indeed progress more rapidly in men than in women, what are the possible factors that might contribute to gender dimorphism in the progression of chronic kidney disease? In Table 3, we enumerate some of these factors. Sex hormones have been shown to have direct effects on cellular biology. In general, estrogen has been shown to have beneficial effects, while testosterone has been shown to have deleterious effects on cell processes that might affect renal disease progression. Some of these processes include collagen synthesis, matrix degradation, generation of hormones and cytokines and that regulate fibrosis and inflammation, the regulation of the renin angiotensin system, oxidative stress, and cellular apoptosis. Furthermore, complex psychosocial, lifestyle, and economic factors impact both renal disease progression and the transition to renal replacement therapy. Men differ from women with respect to many lifestyle factors including smoking habits, dietary habits, adherence to medications and a medical follow-up, and hypertension and lipid control. The need to consider gender in experimental and clinical investigations of pharmacological and physiological phenomena has recently been appreciated. 
clearly there is a need for more studies to explore gender dimorphism and renal disease progression transition to renal replacement therapy. However, there is also a need for novel approaches to unravel complex interactions between biological factors, cultural and economic influences. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.